day-to-day life for the average Venezuelan is a struggle from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. From waking up and trying to turn the lights on to finding out that the power went out overnight. And then trying to take your morning shower to find out that you have no water at home. Then paying for everything has become increasingly complicated. There's no cash. Venezuela finding itself without access to dollars, without access to banks, without access to avenues of finance, even for their oil, came to the realization, I guess, that it needed money and it needed to find a way to get cash when most of the world didn't want to give them access to cash. All assets of Maduro subject to U.S. jurisdiction are frozen. Le digo al emperador Donald Trump, en Venezuela, manda el pueblo de Venezuela. So now that U.S. sanctions have effectively cut off Maduro's access to a global financial network, gold is the last lifeline that Maduro has. Reports claim the Maduro regime is selling out the country's gold reserves to ease the pressure of international sanctions. In the last couple of years, on the side and sort of in secret, the Venezuelans and the Turks started setting up a, a pretty sophisticated web of trade of food and gold between the two countries. We're not sure who's winning from the sale of Venezuela's gold, but what's clear is that the Venezuelan people are losing. My name is Michael Smith, and I'm a reporter for the uh, Project and Investigations team here at Bloomberg News. My name is Patricia Laya, and I'm Bloomberg's Venezuela Bureau Chief, and I write about Venezuela's clandestine gold sales. So the situation in Venezuela is really bad, and there's currently sort of two worlds in Venezuela. One world is for the people who have access to dollars. You can probably afford to have a power generator at home in case the power goes out, and you can probably have a water tank installed for, for when there's shortages of water. Now there's the second world. That's the world that the vast majority of Venezuelans live in, and it's the world where you live in Bolívares. There's shortages of food. Inflation runs in the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands percent, nobody really knows. Which means your, sa your savings have long been gone. There's extreme levels of crime that makes life extremely difficult for anyone who's just sort of living there. You have a whole population that's subdued by hunger and that's also under the control of the government, who's become their sole provider. People who can't really think of an economic future because they can't think beyond the day that they're living. <laughs> Nicolás Maduro is a former bus driver and a former union leader. Maduro came to power in 2013 when Hugo Chavez died, and he was basically Chavez's handpicked successor. Outwardly, their message was that they wanted to spread the country's oil wealth fairly among the poorest Venezuelans. And for a while, they were able to, when oil prices were really high, they funneled much of that money through social programs in Venezuela. But they've been heavily corrupted in so many different ways and uh, bungled and you know, mis misapplied that they've really turned into something that uh, has just had an incredibly detrimental effect on the people of Venezuela in many, many different ways. And when oil prices crashed, um, the whole economy came crashing down because Venezuela depends on 95% of, of its revenue on oil. How bad is it, and is there any end in sight? It's terrible, it's getting worse. Basically, Maduro is waging economic warfare against his own people, his own country an abuse of power that started with Chavez that allowed him to not just change the country's constitution, but also fill the country's courts and the electoral authority with people that were loyal to him. And that allowed the country to completely eliminate any sort of democratic institution. Uh, Maduro has given most of the government's control to the military, so the feeling is that if Maduro falls, they fall. So. 
they they have formed a bond through money laundering, fraud, and all sorts of illegal businesses. A first shipment of gold bars has arrived in Venezuela after President Hugo Chavez recalled almost all the country's foreign bullion reserves from Western banks. So in 2011, uh, shortly after the U.S. economic crisis and the European debt crisis, Chavez basically used that as an excuse to have about 11 billion worth of Venezuela's gold repatriated from banks in North America, banks in Europe, back to Venezuela. He said that it was a measure to safeguard against financial um, instability around the world. And that move by Chavez almost a decade ago is what's keeping Maduro selling gold nowadays. It's legal for Maduro to sell his gold, but what's happened is that after U.S. sanctions, a lot of the buyers have been spooked. So what's happened is that they've begun to sell the gold in secrecy. On Venezuela, you did the tough sanctions and you sent the aid, but it seems like um, Maduro is, is no closer to leaving. We really haven't done the really tough sanctions yet. We can do the tough sanctions and all options are open. We want Maduro to leave so that there can be free and fair elections with the ultimate goal of ensuring that there's democracy and freedom in Venezuela. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on Venezuela um, more than a decade ago, but they never went uh, farther than individual targeted sanctions until 2017. We have our eye very closely on Venezuela. Since Pre President Trump took office, they were just accelerated to cover hundreds of people and companies and government entities and that sort of thing. Uh, we have continued to expose the corruption of Maduro and his cronies, and today's action ensures they can no longer loot the assets of the Venezuelan people. U.S. sanctions can be devastating for the people and companies that are targeted, they're listed and targets of sanctions. You become a pariah in the system of commerce and finance. Unless you're in a country that will allow you to do business despite U.S. sanctions. And that's what's going on with Turkey. Let's get straight to the breaking news overnight. An attempted coup leading to chaos, death, and instability in Turkey. In July of 2016, there was a coup attempt in Turkey against the uh, government of President Erdogan. And it was a, a serious material threat to the Erdogan government. The U.S. watching the sudden uprising with concern. Erdogan felt isolated. He wasn't getting much support from anyone in the world that day. And one of the first calls he got was from a representative of the Venezuelan government who contacted uh, the Turkish embassy in Venezuela and said, we're with you, we know what it's like to be a uh, victim of a coup attempt. We're pretty sure the U.S. government must be behind it somewhere. We're with you. And that, co that contact, uh, which went all the way up to the president of Venezuela and the president of Turkey, was really sort of the seed that, uh, that turned into a conduit for the Venezuelans to get their gold out of the country and to turn it into money. 1.1 toneladas de oro el día de hoy al Banco Central de Venezuela. There's been a tremendous trade of, uh, of gold, tons and tons and tons and tons of it, that has left Venezuela. So a lot of the national reserves have been sold off. He still has this lifeline that's available to him and that he's clearly been able to get away with. We've seen him do a multitude of gold sales this year, despite the sanctions that are in place. So they realize that he still has a way to prop up his regime and to stay in power. <laughs> There's an estimated 80 tons uh, left at the central bank. Uh, that's about $3.5 billion worth. What's left right now uh, is only enough for six more months of food subsidies for Venezuela's people. So if Venezuela runs out of gold, we don't really know what's going to happen. What we do know is that they they are feeling the pressure, and they and this pressure of knowing that gold can soon run out is what's bringing them to negotiate with the opposition. To predict where things are going in Venezuela is a dangerous game, in my experience. You could always find people saying, oh, this can't go on any longer, it's going to collapse. 
but I think it's 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 a very complex uh, crisis there, and it's going to be very difficult to find a a solution that really works quickly. I think. <laughs>